Okay, so the match between Manchester United and Copenhagen begins on a sombre note, giving a tribute to Sir Bobby Charlton, a legend of Manchester United and England who won the World Cup with them in 1966 and who survived the Munich air disaster and uh, in fact uh, went on to create another very uh, well-performing team, a very accomplished team in the years that followed after Busby's Babes and uh, once we get the match underway we will be hoping that the Manchester United can start getting back to those glory days glory glory Copenhagen's shot just goes off the post and this is where Manchester United have been lacking in putting away the opposition's strikes at goal because our defence seems to be a little slow in catching up to counter-attacks. Uh, the corner is dealt with, another corner and okay, that is <coughs> turned out as well. So that's a relief. So these are not good signs that when your team manages to deal with a corner successfully, you breathe a sigh of relief. But uh, what can we do? And once again, Copenhagen down on the right side. Mm, this does not bode well. Marcus Rashford has lost his laser focus that was serving him so well last season. And uh, playing too far on the left, I think. And I think I remember Pep Guardiola saying that he tends to run straight into defenders. And uh, that seems to be a recurring theme in his play these days. So, I'm hoping that he will manage to become a more constructive piece of the jigsaw puzzle. And uh, let's see if Eric Ten Hag can solve the puzzle <laughs> and get us back where we belong, at the top. One of the major things that I think is haunting Manchester United right now is the back passing and the lateral passing. Because we are not even looking to counter-attack or build attacks with, you know, through balls. We're just trying to keep possession and that gives the opposition so much time to get back in shape, to absolutely get two on one sometimes uh, when they are attacking uh, our midfield and our defenders. And check it out, total attempts five and on target one for Copenhagen and Manchester United just had one shot by Hoyland which was a sort of a wayward uh, attempt and that came from a long through ball from Rashford. And otherwise, what is the point of maintaining possession Ooh, if you are unable to translate it into attack? And the shift from gaining possession into attacking is something that is completely lacking right now. For example, let's see right now. Anthony tries to take the ball all the way on the right flank and in the end gets a throw in. Diego Dallo comes up to take the throw and passes it backwards and once again laterally. So I think maintaining possession has become the dominant characteristic for Manchester United rather than building attacks and that is biting us in the butt and uh, causing us to be reactive instead of looking for that proactive goal but uh, hopefully here is Anthony once again this is a good cross but I think it's gone out for a corner all right let's see if we can build something from this this is what we want to see more of one move that started off by Amrabat way in our own third and with some good quick passing uh, one two and then Amrabat gave a nice through ball to Anthony. Anthony uh, sort of laid it on for McTominay. McTominay back heeled it and uh, Hoyland took a shot and it was almost a goal. So this kind of quick movement with the ball is what Manchester United need to get back to. It's not something new. It's just something that they used to do, which they don't do anymore. And I'm not sure whether it's Eric Ten Hag's uh, I don't know, philosophy, football, football philosophy or whether it's just there. 
desperation to keep possession that makes them forget that we are supposed to be scoring you know at least a couple of goals every game even if we lose uh, you know we should not be losing by 1 zeros and 2 zeros or 2 ones so let's see here's hoping to some more attacking play honestly sometimes it feels like we are playing towards our own goal and especially since this involving the goalkeeper in build up play became a little <coughs> prevalent among uh, modern footballing philosophies it's just absolutely terrible to see so much back passing that even when they make up half the pitch in a few passes in just one pass backwards they just lose all that ground and let the opposition you know get the upper hand so and then you try these sort of happy go lucky air balls towards the front that you hope that your front line will manage to trap and uh, convert into a shot on target it's too defensive and there's too much back pedaling and sometimes the players are just facing their own goal and that is not what man you should be about another thing that i remember quite distinctly was when we got a goal kick every football team used to start off with the goalkeeper kicking the ball kicking the ball down as far as possible in the pitch so that it gave the forwards and the midfield an opportunity to build an attack right from there now i see this new fangled uh, thing that they pass to the goalkeeper and the goalkeeper becomes a dribbler and tries to build an attack from the back so building from the back is fine but let's not overdo it because it just lets the opposition keep the pressure on manchester united after a disappointing first half let's see what the second half brings and hopefully we can start it off on the front foot get some good attacks going and hopefully convert at least a couple of them into goals and get some vital three points in our champions league group because we have lost the first two games as you obviously will be aware let's see if copenhagen can provide us with some much needed relief because in the first half they were just toying with our defense as i mentioned earlier in this review but since the second half live stream has just started i thought i'll recap the Ooh. close close reguilon with a deflected shot that is collected by the copenhagen goalkeeper so let's see what this half brings fingers crossed it will get us some goals second half manchester united are looking like a team with attacking intent and this is what we needed from the beginning from the get go uh rashford just slightly offside and then seemingly fouled by the keeper hoyland fouled by a defender but uh just edge edge wise on the var uh in awarding a penalty and it seems like the half time top from eric ten hag has worked now let's see antony from the left once again oh all right looking forward to some more attacking like that and converting them into goals 66 minutes gone and the latest fluffed chance went to garnacho the new substitute along with lindelof and uh, rashford had an earlier chance both of them a little too heavy a touch before taking trying to take the shot on goal resulted in the goal uh, ball going beyond them beyond their control uh, but one thing i do like is that at the 60 minute mark around the 60 minute mark the substitutions uh, the couple of them lindelof and uh, garnacho were made so that at least they have some time to make an significant impact on the play because making substitutions at the 80th minute mark uh, even with the you know extended uh, added on time these days especially in premier league uh, is not really conducive 
to letting the substitutes make an impact. Uh, but here Garnacho of course dragged it a little too far. Uh, I think Holland was at his side and he is ruining that fact. But uh, let's see. Uh, on the other hand, Copenhagen are not giving up and they are also getting some shots on target. Uh, so it still remains an even contest. Harry Maguire of all people <laughs> has headed in a goal to get us ahead in the 70th minute. And uh, they are of course taking a check but I think it's going to be all right because oh yep I think one of the Copenhagen defenders just managed to get his shoulder to put Maguire on side and we will just wait and see for the final confirmation but uh, in the end it has been a story of fluff chances because Rashford and Garnacho were one on one with the keeper when they take uh, too heavy a touch on the ball and let the ball go out of their control. Eric Ten Hag applauding from the sidelines and yes, the goal does stand. So glory, glory, Man United, very vital three points in Champions League and smash that sub button for awesome acts fun. Alright, so that was the short highlight that I will be uploading later and uh, no, sorry, uploading right now and uh, well, let's see if Maguire, the dumb Maguire, is the reason we get three points tonight. About uh, half an hour to go for the match. Uh, let's see what this remaining time brings. Oh, na na! When the situation demanded it, he saved it. Saves the penalty and secures the three points very vital three points for Manchester United and uh, well clean sheet deservedly so this game was one in which both underperformers Onana and Maguire rose to the occasion and let's see if we can continue the same thing not just in the reverse fixture against Copenhagen uh, but in the two very crucial games coming up against Manchester City and uh, Newcastle in the Premier League and the uh, EFL Cup. Alright, so that's it and uh, that's the end of the match. Heartbreak for Copenhagen but very very vital boost for Manchester United and uh, I guess Thank you so much for watching along. I'm Akshat. I've been supporting Manchester United since 1997. And do share in the comments what you think and what you expect from our team. Alright then. Glory, glory. And uh, let's football. Manchester United need to change their name to Heart Attack United. <laughs> that last minute penalty courtesy Scott McTominay's ill-considered high boot uh, did not result in a goal courtesy Andre Onana's just by the tip of his underhand save and I guess this was a match in which underperformers Harry Maguire always the dunderhead and Andre Onana always the flamboyance extravagance and uh, unnecessary Compli <laughs> complicated goalkeeper both of them rose to the occasion and uh, through luck or through trick we managed to secure three points in the champions league do share in the comments what you think and smash that sub button for awesome max fun i'm akshat from india and i've been supporting manu since 1997